Good morning channel and welcome back. You know I realize I start a lot of my videos with good morning channel that's because I video most often in the mornings. I'm a morning guy it's when I have time the day gets busy so I like to do these things in the morning and I welcome you guys to my channel. Um, it's an interesting combination of things. It's photography and motorcycles, two passions I've had for my entire life. I realize it's a, it's a niche, um, you know, channel. Um, very few people might like both of those things, but uh, some do. Some tell me they do. And many people like one or the other of those things, so they tune in for those. Um, and I'm happy to provide uh, for both. But I'm just a guy. I uh, don't make a living or any money from YouTube. It's just a hobby I enjoy. I enjoy bringing things to you guys, whether it's beautiful scenery in places you may never have been, or new and exciting updates to the Honda Goldwing uh, and some motovlogs, you know, riding around soon, I hope, when the weather warms up. It's a crisp 32 degrees this morning, but I have my coffee and things are good. Anyway, some exciting stuff today. Let me tell you what I've got going on. You know, riding a motorcycle <clears throat> has its risk, especially in, you know, say a big city like Dallas, where I am. In today's environment of distracted drivers well it's that distracted environment that you know makes me want to be more safe so I've been looking for a while for a way to bring lights uh, you know lights draw attention lights higher uh, on my bike specifically back here um, on the trunk but I really wanted something that looked good and brought the lights up here on the bike um, more at eye level so that a driver can see um, so here's what I got it is the Pathfinder LED wing or spoiler um, for the trunk it mounts on top of the trunk and it has an integrated brake light and turn signals and you can choose between red turn signals or amber turn signals um, super bright it's also a daytime it's also a running light so it stays on you know while you're just driving and it's chrome which i think it comes in chrome and black uh cruiseman got the black one looks fantastic on his bike i thought chrome would look better on this bike so that's the one i purchased today i'm going to be installing that I'm not going to walk you through every step of the install because I'll be honest with you, Cruise Man has a fantastic video on how to do each step of that. And I'll actually be using his video to help me install this one. But that's today's project. Um, it's been a while since this has been out of stock. It's been a while since I've been able to get it. I'm excited it's here. I'm excited to get it on my bike and be safer when I ride. So stay tuned guys and we'll uh, we'll get that installed. Okay, step 1 is going to be remove the seat. One thing I learned from Cruise Man's video some time ago, and I just now got the grease is to every one of these grommets where a plastic peg goes into like the side panels or maybe even the seat up here you know, spread a little bit of uh, marine grade grease on there to, you know, help for future uh, installs when you need to take something out. It's just take these out. It's just going to make it easier to pull out. Next thing on the agenda was take out some screws on either side of the trunk lid where right underneath the armrest uh, for the passenger backrest. Also, there's going to be a lot of screws coming off in this install, so I'm sort of using this method of sticky notes and clear plastic, plastic containers to help me keep track of what screws go where. All right, and then there were six 
self-tapping Phillips head or JS screws that hold the backrest onto the trunk lid. And they are right here. One, two, three, same on the other side, four, five, and six. I remove those. Once those screws are removed, you lift up under the armrest here and the backrest just sort of comes off, but be careful because it's connected. The backrest heating element is connected by that connection. You need to remove that connection before you pull it too hard. You don't want to break anything. All right, I'm moving fast through some of these, so I encourage you guys, if you're doing this, go check out Cruise Man's video. He goes slow. He tells you every step of the way. Um, once I remove the passenger backrest and the wire that connects it, I removed the other end of that wire off of the connector here on the trunk lid and then pulled up on this little clip. It just pulls straight up and, and the whole wire comes loose from the trunk lid. So next we need to remove this panel here, the trunk lower panel, and you get to it from the other side inside the trunk. But so when removing this front plate, once the screws are out from the back side, it just pulls forward and lifts out. One thing to be aware of, the bottom of the trunk plate has these little plastic hoops and they fit on, I don't know if you can see them, but these little pegs on each side. So when you're reinstalling it, make sure you get the pegs inside these little hoops uh, and it'll go back together fine. All right, next we're gonna remove the trunk lid. It's held on by six five millimeter screws on each, three on each side, one, two, three, same on the other side. Um, so we're gonna remove these uh, evenly on both sides because once you take off these six screws, this thing is free and it, you gotta be careful. You don't want it to fall and scratch your paint or scratch the lid. So you gotta be holding it with one hand when you take those last screws out. All right, next we need to remove this right side panel on the trunk. There are three screws that hold this in place. One here, let me back up so you can see. One here, another one here, and a third one here. In addition to those three screws, there are three, I think, under this mat. Yeah, push pin rivets, one, two, so I'm going to take all of that out and remove the side panel. And then there's one final push pin rivet that needs to come out right here before we can take this side panel off. Now I think it just, there's some tabs that hook in here. I think it just slides backwards and comes off. Okay, we're going to pull the panel towards us and release it up here in the front first and then we'll slide it back. Well that came loose a little unexpectedly. I didn't break anything but it was a little difficult but you shake it a little as you're trying to get it off and it eventually just broke loose. Next, we need to remove this speaker grill off the right-hand side. We're going to do that by releasing or removing this self-tap, this self-tapping screw, that self-tapping screw, and then there is a push pin somewhere down here. Yeah, at the bottom. We'll take those three things off, and this should come right out. All right, next up, we need to remove the trunk liner out of the inside of this trunk lid. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, I have a soft surface here, towels put down so we don't scratch the paint. I'm gonna flip the lid over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, the lid's upside down now. This is the inner shell we need to take away from the outer shell. We're gonna start by taking off these uh, latches from the hood, well, there's four Phillips head screws there. Okay, the trunk lid liner is held in place by seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Going to remove those. All right. Trunk liner removed. We're going to set that aside for now. And then next we need to remove these painted uh, covers that are part of the trunk lid and we remove them by these four screws, one, two, three, four. So those need to come out next. All right, I removed those panels and then drilled a hole in one side and two holes in the other side. Two holes are on the right side, one hole on the left side. Uh, according to the instructions that came with the spoiler. And that's what it looks like from this side. Might have made the holes a little bit big, but I think I'm okay. Anyway, next it talks about cleaning the trunk liner with alcohol. So we're going to do that. Then the instructions tell you to mark this attachment uh, wire with at certain distances and attach these hooks, these uh, zip ties with push pins that I think are going to anchor this wire down. Anyway, certain measurements, it tells you what to do in the instructions. Um, I just marked the line that where they should be with some blue tape. Uh, you can use, I think, uh, you know, Sharpie, anything that shows up on black uh, to mark where these go. I'm going to leave them loose right now because I think I might need to adjust them later and then we'll pull them tight when necessary. All right, I've cleaned the trunk lid with alcohol. Uh, now it's time to take this uh, sub harness and tape it down with gaffer tape to the uh, inner liner here. All right, and here's what it looks like after I've taped it all up. Now, one word of caution, and I think Cruzman went and corrected this in a subsequent video, but his original video had you running this cable up through this channel, and that won't work. Um, according to the instructions, coming through the channel here, uh, taped point A right at the top, it then makes a right hand turn and goes underneath this indention and screw hole, goes underneath and gets taped there, then runs up the outside of this shell, um, which makes it actually stick out a little, but that's okay, and then gets taped at the top with the connectors, you know, somewhere in the middle. Just follow the instructions, you'll be okay. And like I said, I think Cruzman came back later and corrected. I think I remember seeing a video where he corrected that wiring. So anyway, on to the next step. All right, it's time to install the spoiler. So I'm going to feed these two connectors down through the largest hole that I drilled a minute ago. Um, and then I'm going to peel back the 3M tape a little bit on this spoiler so that I can get it in place and then pull out the rest of the, the covering on the adhesive uh, to make sure it's in the right place before it gets uh, solidly placed. So I'm going to feed these things through. And I think I have to do it one at a time so they'll fit. All right. And then I'm going to turn this over. And by the way, I cleaned the surface with alcohol where this 3M is going to adhere just to make sure there's no wax or anything, uh, you know, preventing it from, from adhering. So I'm going to, they've already cut a slit in here, so I'm going to peel back a little bit and, move, and peel it forward so that we eventually can pull it the rest of the way once it's installed. I also heated the surface a little bit with a hair dryer because it's cold out today and I wanted to make sure it gets a good, you know, adhesion. So I'm just folding this up so I can pull it from the back once it's in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on the little wings here. Just peel a little bit of it so that we can pull the rest of it. Okay. Now I think we're ready to flip it over and put it in place. 
that off. Make sure the wire is fed down through there and that the connectors are in the holes they're supposed to be in. All right, it comes with screws and washers to screw this in underneath. So I'm going to flip it over and screw this in very carefully. Flipping it over. And they're going to screw in right here. Screws and washers are in place about halfway tight because I still need some adjustment room on the other side. Flip this over, back over. You know, it actually looks pretty good. I'm going to start to pull out this 3M tape now. Um, I may need to, there we go, just like that. Lift up on this a little. Pressed down for about three minutes on each of the wings and on the center, um, all the while blowing it with a hairdryer because it's 30 something degrees out here, and I want to make sure the 3M tape is warm enough to get a good a good seal there. So keeping it all good and warm. Now I'm going to flip it over and tighten those bolts down on the underneath side. I got the screws and the washers tight I went in and taped this lead wire from the spoiler down on the lid towards this big rectangular opening um, because we'll end up attaching that wire to the wire that we installed on the trunk lid liner so let's do that next all right reinstalling that trunk lid is a little difficult. It's kind of heavy, especially if you're one person. This is a good opportunity to have a second pair of hands help you hold this steady. It took some doing. While holding it in place, you got to get this outside of the three bolts that hold it, outside bolt in place and somewhat screwed in so that you can go and do the other to the other side. All right, got the trunk lid all screwed down with all six screws. Um, and then you remember the marks we did on the cable earlier uh, with the blue tape and we put those little snap uh, zip ties on there? Well, in the trunk lid, this is coming out of what we just installed. In the trunk lid, there's a little hole over here on the right hand side where your first clip goes. So I zip tied it tight, cut off the end, snapped it in. And then the second one around to the front on the same assembly down at the bottom right here another clip right in there zip tie it tight uh, and cut off the ends where it was marked and that gives you play and security on this cable right here okay I have fed the wire along the outside of this speaker um, cleaned this with alcohol because we're going to tape this down in just a minute underneath the speaker over here in between the painted surface and this rail you don't want it over the rail because the seat will crimp it when you put the seat back on you want it under the rail you also want it under so it co comes in under here you grab it comes in under here and you can see I've got them both coming out right here underneath all the rails and within plenty of distance to hook it up to my power accessory hub in just a minute so that's kind of it. Um, now I'm going to tape this down with gaffer tape on the outside of this uh, speaker housing. Okay, about ready to do the wiring here. Um, it comes with these connectors, these white connectors, but I'm not going to need them, so I'm going to cut them off and then match up the wire colors inside there with my power accessory hub. 
and hook it up that way. Okay, once I got the wires stripped back, it's simply a matter of matching up colors because it's all Pathfinder. Uh, white with white, yellow with yellow, there's red with red, blue with blue back there, and black with black. Um, all hooked up, ready to go. Uh, I'm going to start putting stuff back together now. Seats, cover for the speaker, reconnect these wires. All right, installation complete. Let's check it out. Looks like the daytime running lights are working. Left turn signal is working. Right turn signal is working. Looks like brake lights are working. Well, good. Another successful installation that went very smooth. Let's take a closer look at this. So nice. Goes with the bike, the profile. It's slim, not gaudy. Yeah, very, very, very pleased with that. Very pleased. So I'd like to thank Cruise Man for his awesome videos. Uh, they helped me every step of the way here, made this a uh, painless installation. Um, anyway, appreciative to him. Thank you guys for tuning in for another installation video. Um, next will be some more of the Faroe Islands. If you didn't get a chance to go see my day one from the Faroe Islands, I don't care if you're here for motorcycles or photography, you need to see that video. It's got some stuff you're not going to believe. Anyway, look forward to some more videos from the Pharaohs. Uh, two, three, four, five, four more days coming, uh, four more videos coming of each day, each one with its own epic thing to, to see. So look forward to that. But thank you for watching today. I appreciate those of you who have subscribed. Uh, appreciate it if you like this video just click the like button and we'll see you in the next one ride safe and god bless